Hi everyone, happy holidays. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope everyone's doing really well today. Thank you so much for coming to today's broadcast. Today, Theo Hesselmans is presenting using cool new frameworks in mobile domino apps. My name is Courtney, I'm the marketing manager at Team Studio. Howard Greenberg and Paul Delanebia from TLCC are joining me today and we're your hosts. I'll be taking a few moments right now to cover some housekeeping items, then I'll pass the baton to Howard so he can give an intro, and then we'll dive into today's topic. So the housekeeping items, the attendee list is private. All attendees are muted during this session, so you can participate by typing your questions for Theo inside the questions section on your GoToWebinar window. There's a picture here on your screen to help you find where this is. We're doing Q&A at the end of the session, but you're welcome to ask your question at any point in the questions section. Howard and Paul will put a voice to it once Theo is finished presenting. This session is being recorded and the links for the recording and the slides, as well as the database will be sent to you in a follow-up email in a few days. So if you wanna review anything or rewatch the broadcast, feel free to do that. So um, just quickly, if you haven't heard about Team Studio, we provide notes application development tools and services. We help organizations around the globe implement best practices, work more efficiently, and prepare for the future. The notes tools are a suite of tools for notes developers and admins. They help with tasks such as source code control, performance, and tr troubleshooting. Unplugged provides the ability to extend notes apps out to mobile devices, uh, and these apps have the capability to function when users are offline. We also provide template applications for Unplugged. The XControls project allows developers to quickly create XPages applications by dragging and dropping custom controls into their XPages. The applications developers create will work on desktop browsers, mobile browsers, and Team Studio Unplugged. And lastly, Team Studio offers professional services such as developer and admin assistance programs, training, and modernization. To learn more about any of these products or services, feel free to visit teamstudio.com. And now I'd like to introduce IBM champion Howard Greenberg from TLCC. Howard's going to give an intro, uh, and then we'll get started with today's presentation with Theo. Over to you, Howard. Uh, thank you, Courtney, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. Uh, my name is Howard Greenberg, and along with my partner, Paul Delanevia, say hello, Paul. Hi, everyone, and thanks for coming today. Uh, so we're going to be your host today, and, and we're going to have Theo Hesselmans uh, talking about uh, frameworks you can use in your Domino web apps. Um, but first, uh, hopefully you're, you're seeing my screen here. Yeah, we've seen uh, first, that, Howard. Uh, thanks, Paul. Okay, so first, uh, a little bit about TLCC, for those of you who may not be familiar with us. Uh, we've been doing uh, self-paced courses for Notes and Domino since 19, uh, how long, uh, <laughs> say 1997, kind of get the, uh, the decades mixed up. And uh, we've been doing X pages courses uh, since it first came out in the beta days of, of 8.5. Um, we have a, a full complement of courses for our Notes Domino developers, admins, uh, and users. And uh, if you want to see what one of our courses is like, we have free demo courses. They're a bestseller. Uh, that includes a free introduction to X pages development as well as a, a beginning Notes development uh, course. In addition to the self-paced courses, Paul and I also do a lot of mentoring, so we help our students kind of transition from what they learned in the courses to their actual applications. And uh, we can also come on to your site and do private classes or do classes that are instructor-led over the web. And finally, Paul and I have been, uh, especially the last year, doing a lot of work helping companies uh, develop their XPages uh, applications. Uh, so if you're in the need of some uh, development help, uh, some extra resources, uh, we'd be glad to help. Just give us a call. Uh, it's that time of year. The, uh, our our year-end sale is kicked off. So if you're looking to save 
uh, hundreds and actually in some of our, our bigger packages you could save over $1,000 on, uh, on our packages that combine several TLCC courses. Uh, so the link is there. You can uh, check that out. We'll have the link also in the email you get at the, uh, after this webinar ends. And as far as our upcoming webinars, uh, we are working on uh, a number of webinars from some great presenters, uh, some of whom uh, have not spoken at our webinar series before. And uh, some of the folks who are going to be presenting at Connect uh, in January um, I've also agreed to bring their presentations to our webinar series in the in the first half of, of next year. So um, you know we'll have all that information uh, at our uh, web page that lists the uh, upcoming webinars. Hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll we'll get the uh, schedule going. And also uh, the other thing I want to mention is that all our webinars going back about three or four years are available. Uh, they're we're, we're recorded on YouTube and the slides are available and and in some cases demo databases. So there's a lot of information out there. Uh, if you uh, have some free time over the holidays and want to learn about some uh, some new topics. I mentioned Connect. Uh, um, I think everyone's probably has heard of this already. Uh, that is coming up on January 31st in Orlando. It's now in a new location. For those of you who uh, aren't big fans of Disney, it's moved off site to the Hilton. Um, and IBM has released the the session uh, that are that are going to take place, and there's a tool where you can look through the sessions and see what they're going to have, and see you know if you haven't decided to attend, that might uh, help you decide to attend. Uh, in addition, uh, I will be doing a session on next pages performance, as well as there'll be a, a, a large number of other um, experts on all sorts of things about Notes and Domino and all the other related products like connections and, and verse and all that that sort of stuff. So check that out if you um, you uh, haven't already. There is a discount for previous attendees. Um, Courtney mentioned that uh, how to ask questions. There is a questions pane. And so you ask your questions in there. Ask as we go along as Theo's presenting, because he's going to cover a number of different uh, frameworks. So go ahead and ask questions as you think of them. And but we'll we'll get to your questions at the end, and Paul and I will ask Theo whatever questions you ask um, at the end of the webinar. We should have plenty of time for questions. So I'd like to introduce uh, Theo Hesselman. So I've known Theo for quite a few years. For those of you in Europe, I think you probably know Theo, and if you haven't, you need to get to know him because Theo runs probably the best Notes and Domino conference uh, called Engage. And this is a, a really great event. There's great speakers. He puts together a great agenda, lots of fun things to do. And he always picks great locations. Uh, so um, this year it's going to be in, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but Endoven in the Netherlands. And it looks like a really cool event. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you look at the pictures, it looks like uh, the building's about to take off into space. Quite a bit different than some of the other locations that were from like the early 1200s, uh, but it should be a, a great event. So Theo, are you there? Absolutely, Howard. Thanks. Yeah. Let me uh, make you the presenter, and, and then you can take it away. Okay. Thanks a lot, Howard. Here we go. Yep. You're all set, Theo. We see your screen. Okay. Perfect. So, good day everybody, um, and uh, I'm all set, and I hope you are too. Uh, let's dig into this because we've got a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah. This was me about a year and a half ago. I stuck my head in the sand, and uh, I mean, for 20 years, and I finally popped it out, and I noticed that it's a big world out there, and there's a lot of cool stuff going on. So this is the agenda. I'm going to talk very briefly about myself, what the session is not about, which is important, yeah, about the Domino stack, and then I'll cover the frameworks, and I'm going to cover these four, Bootstrap, Ratchet, Backbone, and Knockout, and then we'll have time for some Q&A and, and, and some recording words. Yeah. So about myself, I've been doing notes for a long time. Yeah. I'm an independent consultant. I've been running the Engage, like Howard said. Uh, used to be called BLUG uh, for the past six years. Um, almost seven now. Yeah. 
uh, I'm an IBM champion uh, for some time now. And uh, like I said, I kept my head in the sand for way too long. Um, and I do like wine and other beverages. So if you see me, you know me. Okay, what well, this is not about. It, it's not about hardcore development, far from. Uh, it's not about X pages, although if you do X pages, and I hope you do, then do stick around because all the stuff I'm telling you will be applicable to X page development as well. So hang in. Uh, and it's not about a thousand different frameworks. I'm just going to cover four of them. There are so many. There's so many, I'm just going to cover a few of them. Yeah. And it's not about big applications. It's all small applications, which actually most of them I wrote for customers of mine. Yeah. So what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about being Nodes and Domino being the ultimate uh, content management system, yeah. about hybrid websites and mobile apps. I'm going to show some real-life implementations of projects I did, yeah. some lessons I learned. And at the end, you get away with a free content management system for you to experiment with and then do whatever you want with it. Yeah. So let's talk about the Domino stack. Uh, first of all, you know, we all know it's cool because most of us probably came from, from uh, the Node's Domino world and we know it's a powerful NoSQL database. The security is just incredible. Uh, since uh, about two years, I think we got the wonderful Domino access service built in. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it later. I'm going to use it as well. Uh, we all know it's a very flexible development platform. The Notes client is great. And, and it's, it's a proven system because it exists for quite a long time, backwards compatible. And OK, it's not free. It's not expensive either, but it's not free versus some open source solutions. As we're not only using the Domino stack, we're also going to use HTML5. Uh, I just wanted to mention, I had to put it somewhere on the slide, I just wanted to mention that uh, Android, Chrome, and iOS Safari have some really cool remote debugging tools. So even if you show or test your application or, or app uh, on uh, an iPad or an Android tablet or, or, or whatever smartphone, you can easily hook it up to uh, an, a laptop and, and do remote debugging. It really works excellent. Yeah. And of course, you know that, that if you use uh, if you need to use your applications offline, which I had to do in a few cases, um, just read about how to work with manifests and, and local storage. They're, they're, they're just amazing to work with. Now, what is a framework or a library? I mean, the, the names people use are, are mixed. Um, so I, I usually stick to the word, to the word framework, but um, some people are quite picky about the term they use. Yeah. So my definition is just a set of CSS or and or G JavaScript code yeah, that do all the dirty work for you. So you, you usually have a lot of cross-browser issues. They cope with it. They always have responsive and mobile design first in mind. Uh, they got a huge amount of re reusable components, so, so everything you do, you can reuse again. And they got a really nice split between design code, navigation, and data. And Actually, they use a sort of layered schema, and you can define it in two terms, or you say it's the UI, the architecture, and, and the DOM, or you say it's the design, the MVC, I'm going to talk about that later, and supporting lips. And I, I put it out in a small table here. So what I'm going to talk about is I got two uh, UI frameworks lined up for you, so Bootstrap and Ratchet. Yeah. I got two architecture uh, uh, frameworks for you, that's Backbone and Knockout. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about jQuery and underscore and Zepto. If you don't know Zepto, because that's probably the only place I'm going to mention it, but Zepto is just a, a smaller version of jQuery in size, but it does almost exactly the same thing. Yeah. And so it's especially targeted for mobile devices. If you want to have your jQuery library small, use Zepto. All right, now what do you need to get started with frameworks? Well, the first thing is, you try to pick a framework which is as much tailored to what you currently need. And that depends on your product, on your project. Definitely pick one that's well documented, well maintained, preferably one that is broadly used and supported. Uh, don't try an obscure one uh, unless you're really brave. Uh, um, I'm going to talk about it later. And uh, if you use an MVC um, framework, then definitely make sure that it has some good REST support. And I mentioned here uh, John Daltzgaard's uh, presentation. Uh, by the way, this presentation you can download afterwards, and, and uh, everything that's underlined is clickable. So it automatically jumps to then, then John Daltzgaard's presentation about REST uh, API 
uh, what is REST, and also about domino access services. Uh, a, a must read, in my opinion. What do you need? Well, what's your skill set? Yeah. Well, first of all, you need some HTML skill. Whether it's five or not, it's not really important. Uh, CSS, if possible, some JavaScript. Uh, and on the Node's end, or Formula Language, or Lotus Script, or XPages, uh, or any of those, or all of those, and uh, some knowledge about the Domino Access Server. But again, I refer to John Delgar's REST service uh, uh, presentation because he explains how to set it up and how to work with it. And you need to understand a little bit about, about what REST is and, and about uh, the JSON format. Yeah. Now, there are really a huge amount of frameworks. And, and it, to me, it looks like every day there is a new one popping up. Yeah. So it's, it's really tough to choose. Uh, you can't try them all. Uh, you can read about them all, but still that, that would be a day task in my opinion. Yeah. So start with best of lists. Yeah. And at the end of my presentation, uh, I, I got some links uh, to those. So start with those. Look at GitHub and see how many stars they got. Uh, listen to your, your, your peers. I mean, they're not always, but often your friends. Uh, and they know what to talk about, and then they know they tried things, and then which worked for them and which didn't. Yeah. And keep your eyes open. So don't start with with the latest and the greatest because it 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 might just die after a, a year or so. Yeah. So be careful, uh, let it mature, um, and, and then see uh, what you're going to do with it. And and please do use those helper tools like jQuery underscore and Zepto because they're really awesome. Okay, so before we start with the first framework, um, I'm quickly going to show you the content management system uh, you're getting from me. Yeah? And uh, I'm jumping over to do notes here. Uh, by the way, I'm running this on a Mac, uh, and I'm not even going to show designer. Yeah. Uh, there is no designer for Mac unless you use Wine. But um, So this is the application I'm, I'm going to show you. This is the application you're going to get. And the only difference is that I just blew up everything, and it's just a bigger font so you can read it better. Yeah. The other one just has regular font sizes. So what I got in this content management system, well, I got pages. I got the Bootstrap homepage, for instance. Well, that's, that's the homepage I'm going to start with. I'm going to show you in, in a second how it looks like in a browser. Yeah. Uh, you see that you can add a web title. You, you can add a section. You can see that, that the header has to be included. Uh, you can define a category. The main category is actually uh, helping you uh, with the, the menus, things like that. So these are the, the pages. Then I got some images and files here. Yeah. Like, for instance, I got this uh, flag uh, document. It, it, it has a, a huge amount of flags in there. Um, I got some HTML stuff. Uh, like, for instance, I got, um, so these are all HTML snippets you, you can use all over the place. And, and I made it quite interesting because, uh, look, this is some uh, HTML. But what I got in here, let me quickly jump to another one. Let's go to this one is more interesting. Yeah. Uh, what I got in here, for instance, is uh, I got uh, placeholders for, for, for the category and for the, for the title. You can put it on your screen. I even got something which, which uh, I call redirection, but if you, have, if, I, if you use double brackets, he will include the content of the HTML snippet called navbar in here. Yeah. So instead of having a lot of different HTML, you can just uh, screen them down. And then so this is navbar, and this will be included inside. Uh, the header. And finally, there is some, some GSS uh, and, 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 um, and JavaScript in there, which, which I use uh, all over the place, and I just call it whenever I need it. Yeah. And lastly, and this is uh, pure for, for this particular database, I got some countries I'm, I'm playing with. So, so I got a list of countries for Europe, and I got a list of countries for Australia. And then with all the data in there, uh, like the capital and, and, and the ISO and, and, and the flag and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then I got some tasting information. I'm, I'm in, like you heard before, I'm, an, I'm a wine buff. So I got some information about uh, Chilean wine, French wines, uh, Italian wines. Uh, you can read about it. That, that, that's real live documentation. You can just read about it and, and see my notes about it. Yeah. But we're going to use these two. Uh, list of, of, of data, we're going to use that uh, live in my presentation. All right? So let's see how the application itself looks like. Yeah. I'm using Chrome now. Uh, the reason I use Chrome and not Safari is that uh, one, of the top, one of the things in Chrome which, which I really like is the device mode, and that works better than, than Safari. So that's why I use Chrome usually for my, my development. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is the home page which, which you saw before. Yeah. Um, I got my navigation at the top and uh, it, it all works. I mean, this is just the application. We, we'll show a little bit more about the application afterwards, but this is just a standard application uh, built on top of that content management system. And it's, it's really flexible. I'll, I'll show that in a minute. All right. Let's go to the first one, and that's Bootstrap. Yeah. And I think uh, Courtney is going to set up a, um, a poll now. Oh, it just jumped to the poll here as well from, from me. That's, uh, so you can answer that here. So just um, answer your question. Do you use Bootstrap? And you just answer it, and, and that's it. Yeah. All right. Answers so I'll wait a couple of seconds in. before everybody has, has, made, a, has made their choice. Uh, I presume that a lot of people already have heard of Bootstrap, but the question here is whether you've used it or not. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Uh, about three quarters have voted. Yeah. All right, so let's go back. Uh, so there we see the poll. So oh, I'm pretty amazed that, that even 50% have never used it. Yeah. That's unfortunate because you really should and it's really easy. I'm going to show that in a second. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Here we go. Uh, so what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap is, like I said, it's a front-end framework. So it's something you use for the front-end for the user interface. And it's a collection of, of, of some really cool tools, uh, very basic uh, things for navigation, buttons, forms, uh, fields, whatever. Uh, and it has a few very interesting JavaScript extensions as well for making carousels, for instance. I'm going to show you three examples. Yeah. And... Um, and first, let's let's look at the website again we saw previously. Oops, let me go here. Here it is. Yeah. So you notice that that this is my application, yeah? and I'm gonna go off full mode. Yeah. So you see that now. We should see that. I hope. Yep. There we go. Yeah. If I take this screen and I shrink it down a little bit, you will see that on the right hand side. At a certain moment when I shrink it down, that the right-hand side just disappears. Well, it not really disappears because it's just somewhere down below. I'm scrolling down, and there it is. Okay, Scrolling up again. Um, when I even make it smaller than this, like, for instance, on a small tablet vertically uh, or on a smartphone, notice the menu. Suddenly the menu will collapse, and automatically you will have a a menu, which uh, a nice, they call it a hamburger menu, which from that, there I can jump from Bootstrap uh, of to About, for instance. Yeah. So it's really a very cool way of, of making sure that without any extra development on your part, that, that your menus get collapsed um, and that you have a nice uh, responsive interface for both smartphones, tablets, and, uh, and big screens. Let's zoom this open again so we see it full screen. Yeah, there we go. Um, good. Now, you already seen that, that, that I can switch from one to the other. Yeah. What I also really like in Bootstrap is that the basic team, this is not a basic team, but you can switch from one team to the other. There are plenty of teams available there. So I'm, I'm switching to the clean block team. Yeah. And notice that, that, that all of a sudden yeah, there is now uh, a completely and a different interface. It's still the same thing. It's still the same menu. It's still the same uh, types here. It's still the same content. I can switch to about my background changes, um, and, and but I still see the same content. So it's very easy in Bootstrap to to change the team. It's also very easy to uh, override. Oops, I'm going to go back to the standard one. Uh, it's also very easy to override. Um, everything within Bootstrap. Yeah. It's a really great basis, but you can override everything. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show one other example here, and then I'm switching back to nose as well. Like I got some countries in here. We saw the country uh, tables already. Yeah. I can switch from, from Asia to Australia uh, to North America, and, and I see all the countries in there with all the information there. Really cool, but how did I do it? Well, I did not do any programming for doing this. So let's switch to uh, my application again in notes. Uh, and in here, I got my countries. 
When I open up my countries, I see that I just have a list of tabs. These are my tabs. That, that's what I saw at the top with all the different uh, continents in there, Africa, Asia, Australia, it's all in there. Yeah. And below that, I got my individual panes. And again, this is Bootstrap. Bootstrap allows you to build these things with tabs very easily and depending on where you click upon, uh, it will automatically open the ID which is associated with a particular tab. Now, you see that here in Notes I only have countries of Africa. Now, if I go in Modify mode, you see that I'm using pass-through HTML here. Um, now, countries of Africa actually is a computer text. Yeah. So when I edit the computer text, we'll see some array, some formula language. Yeah. Very nice. So what I got is, I, I, it's very simple actually. I say, look, I first want to have the, the countries uh, belonging to Africa. Um, I do a lookup here. I got a view which contains all my data. Yeah. And uh, this is how a data line would look like, and I just just use the, the incredibly powerful uh, transform uh, add function, and transform will just transform each line in this list, and will just turn it into a table row, and the table row contains my flag, contains my um, my country, and whatever. Yeah. And in the end, I, I use this formatted uh, list of lines, and I just put a, a table around it, and and that there you go. So just by using formula language, I fetch data and I can present it the way I want it to pre be presented. Yeah. And if we go back to the application, so this is how it looks like and, and it just works very well and it's very fast. All right, good. Um, another example which I did uh, for a customer of mine it's, um, it's for, for EY, Ernst & Young, yeah. and also, again, the same application, uh, it, it just took me a couple of days to, to create it. Yeah. Uh, they got some contact information, I can say, give me all the human capital services we provide, you click on one and, and you see all the information here. Um, I can also do a search by keyword. I say I like to have uh, information for family businesses only about uh, IT systems and uh, uh, payroll. Yeah. So I just select a few items, I say search, and in this case I only got one. Um, and again, I can see the information. The same thing as before. Yeah. As soon as I um, shrink the screen, uh, automatically the menu will collapse. Um, you know, I'm just going to show this quickly here. I'm shrinking the screen. Well, it should go. There we go. Uh, you see that already the menu is collapsed. If I make it even smaller, like for instance for a smartphone, you notice that that same information is now instead of next to each other, nicely one below the other, and 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 it's it's entirely uh, responsive. Yeah. And that's how I like it. Yeah. By the way, it's very interesting to notice that this application is written in Bootstrap 2.0. Yeah. Uh, that was my first uh, experience with, with Bootstrap. I liked it a lot. And the application has been used now for, for a couple of years, and everybody's really happy about it. And I didn't see any reason why I should upgrade uh, to Bootstrap 3, which is the current release, Bootstrap 3.3.6, by the way. Yeah. Um, one more example I want to show is the, the Engage website, yeah, which is also entirely built uh, in, uh, in Bootstrap. And you can do whatever you want with it. You, you, I got uh, Twitter information built in. I'm just gonna uh, do some advertisement uh, for my event here. You see that it's in the Netherlands in March, and, and we got just an incredible venue. Uh, I'm gonna wait for the next screen to appear, and then we're out of here. But it, it's uh, it really is an incredible, beautiful venue we got. And definitely, I mean, if you if you wanna meet uh, over 50 different speakers, uh, all the top sessions you, you will see at Connect if you can't make it. Uh, just come over to uh, to the Netherlands in March and, and you won't be disappointed. Okay, let's go back to the application. Yeah. And uh, this is what we saw. There's a second one. And let's talk about uh, how you build this thing in BASIC and in, in, in HTML. Yeah. Um, actually, it's pretty easy. The only thing you have to do is you have to make sure that in your head here, you put in your CSS for Bootstrap. Yeah, so that's the only thing you have to put in your head. 
Next is, and this seems a little bit big, but, but, it, but it's not. Actually, what you define here is your navigation bar. You say it's, it's fixed at the top. Yeah? And it has two sections. It has a nav bar header, which will show uh, when the system is when the menu is collapsed. So you got your three icon bars here. Actually, the three icon bars together build up uh, your hamburger menu. Yeah. And below that, you got your real navigation bar itself with all the different items in there. So I got in this case, I just put in two uh, menu items. I got my home and I got my about. But you can extend it as much as you like. And uh, that's that's all the code you need. It, it's really extremely powerful. The next part of your HTML is, in fact, your main content. And you just put a div class container around it, and, and you put your content in between, and, and there you go. And entirely at the end, you have to make sure that you load uh, jQuery first, uh, and then uh, your bootstrap uh, JavaScript code. So you put it at the end, so it loads it at the end, so that means that your screen will display faster. Um, it doesn't have to load in advance. OK. Now, what's good about Bootstrap? Well, it, it exists for quite some time already. Uh, it is huge on GitHub, 90,000 stars, which is really a lot, uh, a lot of forks. It's over 600 contributors, uh, which is quite amazing. It has some regular updates. I mean, every time there is, uh, there is something that, that can be fixed, they'll fix it uh, as soon as possible. The current version is 3.3.6. Uh, uh, at this moment, there is uh, an alpha version, the second alpha version uh, for Bootstrap 4.0, yeah. which is mainly backward compatible, but not 100%. Yeah. You've got a huge amount of interface components. The documentation is wonderful. A lot of templates, like I said before. It's so easy to, to get started and implement. And, and I wouldn't see any reason why you shouldn't, because it saves so much time in your development. Yeah. And it's broadly used. Now, you will see that broadly used, I also put on the negative side. Because, because it's broadly used, a lot of sites who don't, do, who don't put a lot of effort and just use the, the native bootstrap uh, all look similar. So if you use bootstrap, spend a little bit time and try to customize it. Uh, but if it's just for, for development purposes or, or for test purposes, I mean, the, the standard bootstrap is just incredibly good. But if it's for a commercial application or, or an application that many people should use, then try to customize a little bit so it looks, looks better. Yeah. And OK, it's not an MVC model. It's only UI. Yeah. But we knew that in advance. And there is a, a really nice bootstrap uh, implementation for X pages. Uh, so definitely check that out. If you use uh, X pages, uh, definitely check it out because it's, it's really nicely integrated uh, into the development for X pages. All right, next thing. Ratchet, and we're going to do the same poll again. Yeah. It's going to ask you um, whether you use Ratchet or not. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that the number, the percentage of uh, you've never, I've never used Ratchet before, will be a lot higher now. Yeah. So I'll give give you a couple of seconds to answer this question, um, and um, and there you go. Like I guessed. Well, at least 2% used it, yeah. so not bad. Yeah. Let's get back to the application. Yeah. So, Ratchet. Uh, and uh, we, can, we can be short about Ratchet. Ratchet is a really nice front-end framework, only front-ends, uh, and it's, it's especially targeted at building uh, smartphone applications. Yeah. Uh, it has some really cool HTML. All the components you need is there, so definitely, definitely check it out if, you, if you're building a standard uh, smartphone application. I'm going to show you two examples. Let's dig into the first one, uh, and that's just general ratchet. Yeah. Now, notice that, that I, I have this, this thing in red here at the top that's actually a reminder for me, uh, because when I click here, uh, you will see that, that nothing happens. If I click on About, nothing happens. And the reason is that click support is not into ratchet. So how do we do this? Well, we switch to um, debug mode. Yeah. I hope you can see this. Yeah. Well, in debug mode in Chrome, there is something really cool, and that's device mode. And device mode really acts as if, as if it's a device. Let's go to an, well, an iPhone 6 Plus, for instance. I'm going to string this down a little bit. iPhone 6 Plus in landscape mode. Yeah. I'm going to refresh this. Yeah. So here's my application. And now it works. 
Now I can I can go to about. Uh, I can go to countries. Go to about again. Go to countries. Hey, wait a minute. We got countries here again. So the same thing, except that this is a kind of of, of interface which suits better uh, to be used on, on a smartphone. I, I can go from one to the other. Scroll down. Uh, so it, it's a complete application, and I got a really standard. Uh, application for smartphones. All right. So let's go back to the main website and I'm switching out of device mode and let's go back to this. Yeah. The next application I want to show is something which I did for a company, uh, a customer of mine uh, called Camin, Camin Industries. Yeah. And uh, they have a product which is called LISO 40. And LISO 40 actually is an, an a sort of additive for animal food. Now, if you put this into uh, food for an animal, and let's immediately go in, we'll see for which they have targeted. They got this stuff for poultry and for swine. So if they mix this stuff into the food for uh, for pigs, well, the pigs will probably uh, get bigger faster. Yeah. So let's dig into swine. Um, I can enter all this information. Notice that it's really targeted at, uh, at being used on, on, a, smart, on a smartphone. Yeah. So I enter some information, I click go, and immediately they can see, let's change this um, to um, five, for instance. Yeah. And immediately they can see how much oil they, they gain, well, they don't have to give uh, to the pigs, and how much benefit uh, they have per ton uh, food they give, which is a huge amount. So it's a really interesting product for them to show to their customers, look, if you use so much of our stuff, then you can, you can this is your saving per ton food you give to your pigs. Yeah. I built this application in one day. Yeah. So I started in the morning from scratch. Well, not really from scratch. I started from my content management system. Yeah. So I built this in one day, um, and I was given all the, the images, by the way. Uh, so they, they designed up front, look, this is how it should look like. They designed this all up front and they gave it to me. Now, I must say I cheated here because the application you see here is not built into Ratchet. It was built into Ratchet, yeah, but I wasn't happy with it in the evening because Ratchet has this annoying habit yeah, for tracking every click you got. So the moment you click on something, yeah, Ratchet tries to be smart and will only replace the part of your window which actually has changed. Which to me was a real pain because I wanted, I needed to do, the moment I click go here, I need to do a lot of calculations. And it just didn't work consistently. So I told my customer, look, I'm going home now and I rewrite it and I use Bootstrap. So it took me about three hours to rewrite it again in Bootstrap and, and that's what we finally end up uh, using, and that's Bootstrap. So major lesson learned here, and I'm going back to my application. Major lesson learned here. Uh, I did change my mind. Um, I still think that Wretches is a really cool application, and uh, you definitely should have a, to give it a go if you need to do a, build a smart uh, phone application. But for me, that was a big, a big um, a deal breaker. So I'll come back to that in a second. So how do you do it? Well, it's pretty easy. You start again in your head by including your uh, reference to the style sheet. Ratchet demands that you also load the JavaScript uh, at startup. So that's why it's included in the header here. Yeah. At the top, you start with your, with your header, and that is, that's your top navigation bar. In this case, I have a an, an home icon, which is on the left-hand side. I have a compose icon, which I have on the right-hand side. And in the middle, I have a title, which says, Welcome to Ratchet. Yeah. Then, again, you have uh, a division uh, with, a, with class content, and that's where you put your main content. Yeah. Everything below your header bar will scroll nicely, uh, and everything that's above your footer uh, bar tab uh, Will, the bullet footer bar so will stick nicely to the, to the bottom of your screen, so everything in between will scroll nicely. So this is the footer bar tab. Uh, I got three icons here. I got a home icon with a label home. I got an about icon with a label about, and I got a countries, uh, well, a list icon with a label countries. And entirely at the bottom of your uh, HTML, you load uh, jQuery, because that's where Ratchet relies on. OK. 
Okay, so that's it. I mean, Ratchet is is really easy to use and and definitely something you have to consider if you use smartphone applications. Yeah, uh, it is it's not bad. I mean, 12,000 stars is not bad. It's easy to implement. The current version is 2.02. They got a separate team uh, for Android and iOS. Unfortunately, it doesn't automatically distinguish uh, which one it is. Yeah. So you have to decide up front. Um, and you got all basic uh, uh, mobile components uh, to build a nice interface. Documentation is extremely good. Yeah. What's bad about it, it is relatively young. Yeah. And, and to my biggest disappointment, I mean, this is early 2013. I, I used it uh, in end of 2014. And the version is still the same. So there's very little evolution in there. And, and to me, that's a bad sign, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it has a limited number of browser support. Like I said, it's only touch support, so, so it's, it's a bit annoying to test in desktop browsers, so you have to use something like um, like the um, design mode, sorry, the, the uh, device mode in Chrome, and um, then, then you're off. Yeah? So that works pretty well. Of course, you can test it on, on, your, on your tablets or, or smartphones as well. Yeah? And like I said, it intercepts links, and that was for me, that was a deal breaker, and I said, no, I can't use this, so I went back. Um, to uh, bootstrap. Yeah. And again, it's only UI. All right, now we're getting somewhere because now we're going to make uh, our feet a little bit dirty and uh, uh, let's go to Backbone. And again, we're going to do a little bit of voting. I guess some people already use this. Um, I hope so because it's a really, uh, really cool framework. Give you a couple of seconds. Uh, now, Backbone, the difference between Backbone and the two previous ones, uh, previous frameworks we saw was that Backbone is indeed a JavaScript, uh, uh, a JavaScript framework, and it's used for using in the back end. Uh, you, you, you have to use something like uh, Bootstrap or UIKit or whatever uh, in order to do your front ending. Uh, so, oh, yes, you see, 3% more, so not that many. But I hope I hope to, to convince you that 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 backbone is definitely uh, something you have you, you should consider. Yeah. All right. So like I said, it's a JavaScript library. It it it's, has a really nice RESTful JSON interface. Uh, it's based on a model view presenter uh, paradigm, which is derivative of, of a model view controller. I'm just going to show you actually what what this is. Yeah. If we talk about uh, MVC, uh, then we got the model, which is our backend. You can consider the model as your data model, all right? And your view is not what you think uh, if we're used to in Node. The view is really what the user sees on the screen. So it's the UI, the user interface, what the user looks at, what he, what he, what he can see. So that's your view. Yeah? And in between, you've got your controller. Yeah? The controller handles all the tasks, which means that, let's say, a user clicks on a button, yeah. That's a user event. The user event is handled by the controller. And let's say the user clicked on a save button. The controller says, all right, the user says I need to save. So the controller will send updates to the data model. Yeah. Data model, yeah, if data is updated in the model, the controller will know about it. And the controller will send those updates to the view. So that's a classic M uh, MVC model, which is used by, for instance, um, Angular as well. Yeah. And Backbone uses that same uh, MVC, except that they call it Model View Presenter uh, paradigm. OK, so let's have a quick look at, uh, at a demo. Let's go back to this one and go Backbone. And let's see countries. Whoa, uh, it looks exactly the same as what we had before. But the way the data is fetched here is entirely different. OK. Entirely different. Yeah. Um, I got another example I'm going to show. Yeah, that's, um, but that's for later. Yeah. But I'm definitely uh, coming back to this because I want to show it anyway. So these are my countries. Let's have a look at how it's done. Yeah. The first thing you do, and this is your code, the first thing you do in JavaScript is you say, look, I need a country, and the country is, is my data model. So I just say, I got a variable country, and it's based on uh, a backbone 
uh, data model. You can add something. Uh, this is quite limited here, but you can add things like like default defaults uh, for for uh, data fields, for instance. Yeah. So I just define my country as as a model. The next thing I, I do is I define my collection. I say, look, I got a country collection, uh, and it's an extension on what's built into Backbone as a collection, and it uses the the data model called country, which I define above. Yeah. And this is how to get information to fill that collection. And notice I got two URLs here. The second one is is is, uh, is commented out. Yeah. Um, the second one is the one you would use if you would use your Domino access services. Yeah. Because you just say, look, countries is the name of the view. I want to have the first 300 countries in that view. Yeah. That's by using Domino access service. I also created just, I mean, maybe you're not allowed to use Domino Access Server because it has to be enabled server side. It has to be enabled on your database. Uh, maybe you're not allowed to do that. You can still use the good old-fashioned um, agents. In this case, it's just a Lotus Script agent. Yeah. A Lotus Script agent, was, which I say, look, get me the countries, and it returns the same JSON information as this view does. Well, almost the same, at least uh, the information I need. Okay, so it's just JSON. Oh, by the way, if you wonder how JSON looks like, I'm, I'm quickly going to show this to you. Uh, this is the same link which you've you seen before, and this is the information you, you retrieve when you use Domino Access Service. So I got my list of, uh, I got a JSON uh, container which uh, all my information about uh, the continent, uh, the country, uh, my ISOs, uh, the domain, the phone, uh, the flag link, I got all that information in here, and this is JSON. So JSON is a really easy to, un to understand and also readable format uh, for data. A lot easier to read than XML, for instance. It's less verbose. And in, in there, you even see that the UNID is in there, which is quite interesting. And you even have a complete link, uh, which I use afterwards, a complete link to, to your document itself. Yeah. So we got our model defined. We got a collection set up. Yeah. Remember, it doesn't contain data yet. It's just a definition. Yeah. Next thing we do is we define our view. So in this case, I say, look, again, I got a country view, which is an extension uh, of the built-in backbone view. Yeah. And in there, I got a country diff somewhere. So I got, I got an ID, yeah, a country diff, and that's the place I'm going to show it afterwards. This is the place where we're going to put our data. So inside our HTML, the only thing we def have defined there is an empty division called country diff. Yeah. The template uh, we're going to use, and in this case, look at this particular line here. It has an underscore there. So underscore.template is a function which is from underscore JS. So underscore is a really, really nice library, even if you do not use it for templating. I use it mostly for templating, but even if you do not, not use it for templating, have a look at it because it contains some awesome uh, array uh, functions, for instance. Yeah. So in this case, what I do is I say, look, get me the country template. Get me something with an ID of country template. I'll show it in a second. Get me the HTML of it, yeah? and that's what I use as a template. Yeah. The moment the country view is initialized, yeah, I want to fetch my information, and if it's successful, I want to render it and show it to the user. So the rendering itself is how it pushes information to uh, the UI, to what the user sees. And what does the rendering do? Well, the rendering is rather easy. It says, OK, use the template you got before. Yeah? Feed it with all the lists of countries which you fetched. Feed it, and then put the rem all that information, put it in the element we defined before, put it in country then. So that's how we render it, just one line. And finally, and this is what really makes it happen, we create a variable country list, and we really initiate uh, the country collection here. So the moment you issue this line, uh, all the data is fetched uh, through uh, this or to uh, your agent, and it's fetched and put into uh, the collection country list. And the next thing we do is we say, OK, now, because we got our data, now you can initiate the country view. And the country view will check whether the data was fetched correctly, and then will render it uh, for the user. Now, it will render it using some HTML. Yeah. So the first thing we got here at the top is we got our empty country div division. 
Okay, so that's what we got at the top. So in here, in between these two uh, greater than smaller than, in between these tags, yeah, all the data will be rendered. Yeah. And like I said, we'll be using a template, and the template's name was country template. So here's the ID, country template. We put in some bootstrap code to make our table looks nice. Yeah? So we got a division, we got our class, which is striped. We got a nice header at the top with country, capital. Yeah? And then we got our body of our table. And inside the body of the table, we got a loop. And again, we're using underscore yeah, to construct this loop for us. So underscore will interpret whatever we got here, the, the special text uh, with a percentage sign will interpret what's in here. And in this case, it will loop over all the different countries we feed it, yeah? and for each country we find, we create a table data with the name of the country and another one with the capital of the country. Yeah? So when it just loops over all the countries it can find. And that's what we use uh, to build the nice list of countries. All right. Okay, what's good about Backbone? Again, a lot of stars, very interesting, really good, very detailed documentation. Um, there's a huge library as well of, of extra functions. Uh, it's, it's extremely tiny, I mean, it's less than 7K. Can you imagine it's less than 7K, the whole code of Backbone? I agree, you need, uh, uh, you need uh, underscore and, jo and, and jQuery as well, but I mean, Backbone itself is an incredibly small uh, framework. Uh, it has a good integration for underscore, especially for templates. Routing is easy to do. And, and you might be amazed about the number of, of big uh, websites that use Backbone, like USA Today, RDO, uh, Airbnb, they all use Backbone. So don't think that, that Backbone is something weird which I, I dug up and find by accident. No, it, it's something which is, which is really, really widely used. Yeah. And it got good uh, REST support. Now, What's bad about it, and, and bad is it's quite, quite relative because it just depends on, on what your skills are, but it is a different concept. If you're used to doing classic uh, nodes development and our X page development, it's a different concept um, because you got, you got these layered, this layered approach. Yeah? So the learning curve is a bit steeper. You need some, some relative good knowledge of, of JavaScript. The more you know, the better. Uh, to be fair, my JavaScript knowledge is, is not really decent. It's decent enough, but I wish it was a lot better. Yeah. Uh, but I still managed to use a lot of things there. Um, it has no data binding, and I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. And, and it's an MVC model only, so, so it's, it's no UI. But again, that's good as well, because then you can pick your own uh, preferred uh, front-end framework. Now, why do I mention no data binding? Well, and then I'll, I'll talk later about what data mining is, but this again for me was a deal breaker. I started off doing a project for, for a client of mine and, and the data mining at a certain moment I said, look, this is, this is too hard for what I need in my current project. So I decided to abandon Backbone even though I really like it and, and, and I'm definitely going to use it in other projects, um, but I just needed data mining and, and I'll, I'll talk later what, what data mining is because my next and final framework uh, is Knockout, yeah. and uh, Knockout uh, does use data binding. So we're doing a quick poll again, uh, have you used it again, and uh, just answer the quick poll. We'll wait a couple of seconds uh, while I, I'll talk uh, about Knockout. Yeah. Knockout is, is a, a JavaScript framework, like Bootstrap is. Yeah. It's uh, an implementation of the model view view model pattern. So entirely different from the model, uh, well, not entirely different, but, but slightly different from the model uh, view uh, controller model. Uh, let's see how the poll worked out. Well, apparently there are some people who have used it, um, and uh, again, a lot of people who didn't. Hooray, that's good, uh, because that means I convinced more people to go for it. Uh, all right. So, knockout. Like I said, it's a model view view model pattern. Very annoying to pronounce model view view model pattern. Uh, uh, and it does support templates. Uh, again, a really nice separation between uh, data view and, and how it's displayed. Um, and, and it's really cool. Let, let's have a quick look at, at and it's a simplified model of how it looks like. Like in MVC, we got our data model at the end. Yeah. And 
what the user sees are a view at the front end. So again, view is what the user sees and nothing to do with the notes view. View is what the user sees. And in between, you got a view model. Now, it works a little bit different. So what happens is that, again, if I click in my view, I click on the save button, commands are being sent to the view model. The view model needs to handle those, uh, like for instance, a save. And the view model will make sure that data will be exchanged with your data model. The nice thing is that instead of having to code how you update your view, you do the, the link between your data and your view by using bindings. And bindings is such an amazing thing that I'm going to show you how it works. Let's get some of them demos here first. The first one I'm going to show, and, and this is really something you're going to enjoy, countries of the world. Same thing yeah, like we saw before, but the way these countries appear is again entirely different from what we saw in Backbone and what we saw in Bootstrap and in Ratchet. Yeah. The next example I want to show, and that's important because this is uh, something uh, which, which I, well, it, it's an old survey which I did, uh, did for Engage, uh, but it's completely based uh, on, on Knockout. And this is the one actually I initially started off doing with, uh, with Bootstrap. So I'm going to show you what data binding is. So in this survey here, I got this question about what's your relation with, you see it loads, it's an old, it's an old uh, um, survey. What's your relation with, with Lotus? I'm an, I'm an IBM or I'm other. The moment I click other, explain appears. All right? Now, the nice thing is that there's no code involved in this. In this. And let me show this to you. Let, let's go back to the uh, debugging uh, page here. Yeah? And let's have a quick look at uh, first, let's click here. Yeah. What this does, you see that? I got an input of type radio. Yeah? The name is A5. And this is weird. I got an attribute here called data bind. And this is what Knockout is looking for. I got a data bind. And I say, look, the checked attribute of this radio button depends on the value of A5 within my data set. So M form uh, KO, Knockout, yeah? M form Knockout is, in fact, my current data model. That's my. That's my yeah, that's my data array, yeah, which contains all the data. So the moment I check IBM, at that moment, the same moment, my data is updated in my array without having to do any coding. Just by doing the data binding, it knows that it's linked. Yeah. And a little bit further here, I got my, this is my span here, this is my other, and just watch what happens here when I click other. Yeah. You see what happens? I'm just going to do a little bit uh, a few times. Yeah. So the moment I click other, the display is none, which I got here. Display is none, disappears. So I click other again, and display is none is gone now here on the right hand side. And why is that? Because again, I use data binding, but this time I use the visibility flag of this particular span. Yeah. So if this function here, it's just a value which checks whether uh, other has been selected in, in A5, if the value is true, then my visible becomes true and this particular span becomes visible. If it's not true, I'm going to do it again, if it's not true, automatically it will add display as null. Again, no coding, my data binding just does this for me. And you can do data binding based on, on value. You can do data binding based on any attribute you like. It's extremely powerful, and, and it, it helps your code so much. Yeah. OK, let's do one final um, example. I'm going to, let's see, uh, this, this again. I'm going to knock out. And I, I built for you, I built a CRUD system. So uh, create, read, update, and delete. Um, so what I got is at the top here, these are my wine tastings. So I can say, show me some wines I tasted from South Africa. I tasted these wines from South Africa or from the USA. Uh, the list is longer here, uh, or from Portugal. Uh, but the moment I switch this country list, at that moment, this data is fetched 
and, due, and, and, and using data binding, my screen is updated. Okay? So it, it, it's really, really very interesting. Let, let's, have a, let's have a look here. Let's edit some data. Yeah? Let's change uh, Petit Verdot to Petit Verdot with a lot of T's. I click on Save. The moment I click Save, not only is my front end updated automatically, without any code involved, because of data binding, but also my back end is updated. If I create a new tasting, let's call this uh, new wine uh, for uh, Courtney, yeah, and it's from the Douro region in Portugal, and it's a 2015 one. I save it. The moment I click save, it's automatically added to my list here, my view, yeah, and at the same time, it's automatically inserted into my backend. Okay. When I click delete, I confirm it. My line disappears and is also deleted in my backend. Of course, provided I have enough rights to, to do deletions. No? Okay, because it, it, it's a notes database in this case, so, so it, it, it adheres to all your security issues you've got. Okay, let's have a look. We're almost done here. Let's have a look at how this works. Yeah, so we saw countries, we saw the tasting demo. Let's have a quick look at, at, at the country code. Yeah? In this case, what I do is, and that's very important, so I create my view model. Yeah? And I got this countries variable, and the countries variable is an array, but it's not just a regular array, it's an observable array. So I create an empty observable array. Now, what's the difference between a regular array and an observable array? Yeah. That is that everything that happens within the observable array, if the data within that array changes, it will automatically invoke data binding. So if you have something that is bound to data in countries, it will automatically be updated on the screen the moment the, the array changes its content, or part of the array changes content. And this goes two ways. That's important. Yeah. So I construct my, uh, my JSON here to, to get my data, and, and I'm using my get countries, but again, uh, instead of the agent, I could have used um, the, um, the Domino access service again. So I get my, my, my information and I pull all that information directly into my array, my observable array countries. Yeah. Um, I got a small, I mean, the whole code is, is in the demo database, but uh, for brevity, I didn't put it here, but I got a continent which just gets me the list of unique continents from all countries. And I created a, a small um, function here to be able to filter countries based on a continent. So if, if I use this, this filtered countries function, I just feed it the name of the continent, and it will return me all the countries using a built-in utility in Knockout, yeah, will return me all the countries that belong to that particular continent. So this is my setup. That's all there is. And here's where the magic happens. The, mom the moment I tell Knockout, I say, look, now apply the bindings and create a view model. That's, that's, that's it. That's what. That's everything you need to do this. Yeah. Now, I got a tab, yeah, and uh, this is my tab uh, for all the different countries. Yeah. And I'm using a template again. I provide the name of the template, which is continent template, and I tell him automatically, okay, loop over all the continents. So, so he will create this particular line for each uh, continent uh, there is. And templating is built into Knockout, uh, so I don't have to use underscore. Now, how does this continent template look like? You see it here. Yeah. Again, some uh, bootstrap um, code for making it nice. I got my header here, but within the body, within the body, I say, look, bind me, yeah, bind me the content of the body, bind it to the template, which is country template, which you find below, yeah, and do this for each continent you get. Remember that this continent template will will be fed a continent, so he will do the same thing, yeah, loop over all the countries for a particular continent. And the country template itself is quite easy because it's just a loop, it creates a table row for each continent he finds. And again, I do data binding, I say bind the text of this particular uh, TD, bind it to the country, 
and bind the capital uh, also to the text uh, of this particular TD. For an image, for instance, I used uh, I bound I bound it to HTML. The final slide on knockout is a little bit about the tasting code. Yeah. Um, the top uh, function here is what you what I use uh, for subscribing to my main country. And that means that every time the main country drop down changes, I get a new value from it, yeah, a new value for a country. I change the country to Portugal. At that moment, using getJSON, I fetch, in this case I'm using uh, data access service again, I fetch all the tastings belonging to that particular country, Portugal for instance, yeah, and it will fetch me that information, put it into uh, an, a tastings array, yeah, and that tastings array I put into an observable array. Right. I could have done it in one, in, in one line, but, but I prefer doing it in two lines. Um, so tastings again here is an observable array, and the observable array contains all the tastings for that particular country I asked for. And just by doing this, and the binding which is, which is in place, my list of tastings is updated the moment I switch country. There's no code involved for updating uh, that table uh, of that list of, of, of tastings other than uh, doing uh, the data binding and, and creating a template for it. Yeah. The whole code for the tasting, for the whole CRUD system, is if you print it out in, in normal readable uh, font size, it's just one page, one page large. For creating, reading, uh, updating and deleting. Yeah. This is, by the way, part of the saving code. I just call for, for the moment the user clicks a button, uh, I just call this, this Ajax thing and I say, look, this is the document uh, you have to update. Uh, I JSONify uh, my tasting array uh, and using patch and not post, uh, I discovered this uh, by accident. Uh, it was documented, but of course I didn't read it well. Uh, but if you use post, then it will only, it will, it will update only the fields which are mentioned in your JSON package and it will empty all the other fields and that was not my intent so if you use patch you will only update the fields which are in your JSON um, string. Yeah. Okay, now final slide for knockout. Yeah. We're almost done here. Yeah. So what's good about knockout, it, it is used quite a lot, uh, some very good documentation, an extremely good interactive tutorial and examples. Uh, Data binding is out of this world. Yeah, it's really good, and like I said, it also includes attributes, not just uh, values or text. Yeah. So your UI is automatically refreshed. Templating is, is really nice, built in. Uh, you can do mappings via, via one of the plugins uh, of, of Knockout. The REST support is awesome. The BAD, same as before, it is a different concept, so you need some, some learning. Uh, you need decent knowledge of JavaScript. There's no routing provided out of the box. And it's an MTDM model only, so you have to use another framework like Bootstrap or UIKit or, or whatever, jQuery um, uh, mobile, for instance, to, to provide your front end. Yeah. All right. We're almost to, close to the end, and then uh, we'll answer some questions. Yeah. Um, these are some links. Again, when you download uh, the presentation, you can click on all these links, and there's some really, really good uh, things to read about. Um, don't write it down, download the application, download uh, the presentation. A few parting words, uh, do try out different frameworks, read about some frameworks not, not, and, and select the ones uh, which is most ideal or most fitted for your project. Yeah. This is an important gotcha. Yeah. Uh, be careful once you use a particular version of a framework, it's usually not vectors compatible. I had that issue with uh, Bootstrap 3 and Bootstrap 2, which was completely different. Uh, Bootstrap 4, luckily, uh, will be not uh, that much different than Bootstrap 3. So I'll definitely update my existing Bootstrap 3 uh, websites. Um, Angular, for instance, will is, is in beta stage now uh, for uh, version 2. It's entirely different than version 1 from Angular. So definitely be careful. Uh, upgrades are not uh, always backwards, or usually not backwards compatible. 
and so they do create code lock-ins. But I mean, that that's that applies to any uh, environment you choose. Yeah? If you go for X pages, well, you you, you create a code lock-in into X pages. Yeah? So definitely choose wisely. Don't bury your head in the sand. Pull it out yeah? and uh, be productive and have fun. Well, thanks, Leo. Yeah, that was real informative. Um, let me just switch presentations over to myself here. You have some questions for me? And we have some questions lined up. Before we do, let me just remind everyone uh, to ask questions. There's a questions pane in the GoToWebinar interface. If you don't see the GoToWebinar interface and just see this little little ribbon bar, there's an orange arrow. You can expand it and you'll see the questions pane. And before you get to the questions, uh, just uh, some upcoming events, uh, if you're planning your 2016, I mentioned Connect, uh, and uh, free, you know, IBM Interconnect is kind of a multiple IBM brands. Um, they announced a couple weeks ago the dates for Inform 2016 in Australia, uh, and of course Engage, that's Theo's conference, as well as the Entwicker Camp, which is a German event for developers that Rudy puts on in April. So uh, just some events to keep in mind and of course uh, a reminder about TLCC's end of year sale. Uh, great uh, chance to uh, save them some TLCC training on XPages in Java. And um, I think we're ready for some, some questions, Theo. Paul, do you have some lined up? Go ahead. Yes, I do. Uh, We've got one from Saba here. Uh, writing HTML using formula language seems inefficient to me. Code maintenance must be a nightmare. Uh, why don't you use X pages for your HTML? And this, Theo, was early on when you were showing the uh, bootstrap example. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said before, you definitely can use X pages. It's just that, uh, to be honest, I really, really tried using X pages and it just wasn't my thing. Uh, um, so, so I, I stick to classic node development, um, and, and but again, you can use X pages uh, wherever you want. Uh, and, and I agree. I mean, formal language might not be uh, the most convenient thing, but but the fact is that if you use a computer text, yeah, as a super user, I'm, I'm not going to say that that everybody can can do this, but but as you have seen before, so it is a nodes application, and the nodes application, the content management system is entirely a Node's client uh, database. So that means that there is no, you, you don't need to go to go into design mode. So that means that, that you can give this to a super user or somebody who has to maintain the website and he can, he can just update the website without any issues, without having to, to do any X pages. He, he can just use it. If he knows a little bit about HTML, he can create the most crazy websites you can imagine. So, so definitely go for X pages if, if that's your thing, yeah? and I hope it's your thing because it, it, it is cool, uh, but you don't have to, and that's what I wanted to show with this. Uh, thanks, Theo, and by the way, just if you, know, you are using X pages, uh, there is the, uh, you, you can get Bootstrap in the extension library. There is uh, uh, and it bootstrap enabled uh, various controls as well as some unique bootstrap controls like for a carousel and some other things. So, so um, a lot of, you know, some of the manual coding uh, can be done for you automatically if you choose to go that route. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mentioned that as well. So, and, and it's, it is really powerful. It's really nicely integrated as well, bootstrap and XPages. Um, Theo, you had uh, mentioned the uh, Get Countries agent. Can you speak a little more about that? Uh, I guess um, the fact that I guess you wrote that agent to provide your custom JSON can, uh, code. Yeah, I, I can do that. Um, well, uh, actually, uh, I can't show it to you because I'm, I'm, I'm on a Mac. I can't go into design mode. But but it's it's really a very simple loader script. And, and the moment you you download uh, the application, you can have a look at it. But the only thing it does is. <coughs> It, it, it creates a collection uh, based on a view and it just loops over every uh, document in that view and it constructs uh, the correct 
uh, format uh, for JSON. So, so yeah, it, it's it's really straightforward. It's just a couple of lines of code, yeah. and you just make sure that that it adheres to uh, to the JSON format. Yeah. All right. So it's it, it's really easy, and and again, you can do it in in, in Lotus Script. Um, you can it, you can also do it uh, as an an, an X agent. Yeah. Okay. And Theo, uh, we had a question from. Uh, Pardon my pronunciation, Piomir. And Piomir said, said if you're using, uh, or actually his words were, can you imagine using Backbone as a front end to fetch data from multiple databases and views and then somehow put the data all together to do paging? Is that something you've ever thought of or looked at? Uh, it is definitely feasible. It's definitely feasible. It, it just depends. It just depends on on how uh, because the moment you fetch data, yeah, and you saw that if you use uh, Domino Access Service, there are some parameters in there, and, one, and, and I just used one parameter uh, for the count. But you can use other parameters. You can say, look, uh, get me the first 20 starting from uh, the 61st uh, document. Yeah? So it, it's rather easy to, to do to do paging, but it is true you have to build it yourself. So it's not like uh, in in X pages that that paging is, is built in. No, it's not. You have to do it yourself. But a you got Bootstrap to make sure you got you can build a nice interface for it, and uh, b you can you can use Backbone uh, to to fetch that data um, uh, or Knockout for that matter. Yeah. No, definitely it, it it is certainly feasible. Okay, Theo, a couple of questions about your demo database and is it going to be available? Um, a question from Petrus, can we get your wine list? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> what, what can folks expect uh, with the download that you mentioned? Well, in, in the download, so there's two downloads. One, one is the presentation itself with all the links in there you can click on. And the other one is, is just a standard notes database, which, which I've shown. Uh, and, and all the data is in there. You can just... Uh, put it on your machine, and uh, you open it. You open the link of where you put it on on your own server. You open it up um, using a browser, and and it 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 should work uh, right out of the box. And you can you can try everything which is in there. So uh, even that, I must say, it's it, to be honest, it's a limited uh, number of of tastings I put in there. Uh, uh, my full list. Uh, well, yeah, it's. Let's say that's private, but but it's a lot bigger than 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 the few hundred which which are in there. Yeah. But you can definitely have a look at them, um, and um, and and I mean all the countries, everything is in there. Everything I've shown you is in there. Uh, you can look at the code. You can look at the backend, uh, adapt it to your liking. But like I said, I use this template yeah, almost always if I have to build a web uh, site for my customer, because everything's in there to build any kind of website. My, my whole Engage uh, website is based on, on this uh, content management system. Yeah. And it's a nose database, so you can extend it your, and, and eat your heart out. Yeah. I'll include that link for everyone in the follow-up email for the database. Yeah. So the link will be included in, in, in your follow-up right. emails. And all the slides will be put on uh, slide, slide share as well, with a link to those in the email. And so, Theo, are you saying that your wine list exceeds the Domino 64 gigabyte limit? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say well, I still have I still have, have some room left uh, to taste more for for the next 10 years. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and then we'll ha then hopefully by then IBM will expand you know beyond the 64 gig limit. Yeah, there you go. Um, there you go. Yeah. I had a question from Renee. Have you tried uh, Angular, and do you have an opinion of it? Um, I tried Angular. Well, no, let's put it this way. I, I read about Angular because, to be honest, I think Angular is, is the hottest framework currently, well, a year ago available. There are some new ones, uh, like React, for instance, which to me seems also very, very interesting. And I must say, I read about Angular, and, and I read most of the documentation, and it was just how can I say it? Not too complex, but it just was went way above my needs. Yeah. So Angular is definitely, in my opinion, is, is definitely uh, the best one available, but it's also the most complex one available. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but, but Angular is, is, is not an easy framework. It looks very easy 
uh, when you when you look at, at the basic documentation, but once you get started with it, it it's it's more elaborate. Now, anyway, I, I can definitely refer to uh, some really cool. I think uh, Mark Lösing uh, and Marky Roden did a presentation at Connected in January this year uh, about using uh, XPages, Domino, and Angular. So definitely check that out if, if that's your thing. Definitely check it out because it, it was a really really good presentation. Okay, yeah, I think uh, Mark wrote and repeated that at MW Lug. I'm not sure if that was one of the sessions that were videoed and if that's on their website or not, but something you could take yeah, a look at. Yeah, check it out because the, 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 those guys did some really cool stuff and they built some, some amazing uh, databases uh, based, uh, based on Angular and uh, in your front end uh, and then back end uh, X pages. Yeah, absolutely, check it out. Uh, you got one, Paul? Theo, I have a question for you from myself. So two years after pulling your head out of the sand and looking at different frameworks, do you find that you're gravitating to a smaller set of frameworks or combining um, a couple of frameworks over and over again? Well, combining, I mean, you can combine a UI, a UI framework and, and, and a backend framework. Yeah? I mean, you, it, it's, it's, I think you're doing yourself a big dis disfavor if, if that words exist by using two like backbone and knockout and angular at the same time it wouldn't make sense so so definitely stick with with, with one of them for per project uh, uh, but I must say I keep my head out of the sand now and, and every time uh, I see something new pop up that's the first thing I do and then see when wow what can this thing do um, like, like I said I'm, I'm very very interested in react um, uh, react.js uh, but there are some, some some cool ones coming out as well. Uh, and also, what, what, what I really like is that uh, even the UI uh, frameworks start to, to get to extend, like for instance in Bootstrap uh, 4.0, so the next version which is coming up next year, uh, they got some, some official uh, templates and those templates include uh, things like, like, like graphics and, and uh, much more flexible table handling and things like that. So, you, you get an, and things like like, like paging, um, so you get a lot more of of those goodies built into uh, those frameworks. Um, and and I to be honest, I I think we just saw the tip of the iceberg uh, with with HTML5 now becoming uh, available on almost everything, uh, um, and with the, the power of, of CSS which is increasing. Th those frameworks, I mean, like I said, we, we just saw the top of the iceberg. Yeah. Some cool things are waiting us. Uh, Theo, um, you, we have a question from Renee, and you had mentioned when you were discussing Knockout uh, as a, a, a bad thing, uh, having no routing. Would you want to expand upon that? Yeah, well, uh, uh, MV, MVCs like, like Angular, for instance, and 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 uh, and backbone, they have routing built in. That means that by default, they think you or, or well, they they have it look like you're working with a single page application. Yeah. So they 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 replace things within your page without replacing your whole page, if that makes sense. Yeah. So routing from one page to the other is 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 not entirely refreshing your screen. So so only part of your screens are refreshed. Um, and uh, so, so if if you if you want that, and a lot of applications really really need it, uh, uh, and if you build really complex application, then then routing becomes important. If you have a lot of screens and you have to switch from one screen to the other, then then routing becomes important. And then I definitely uh, would look uh, like to things like 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 Backbone and um, and Angular, uh, because Knockout doesn't have uh, these uh, doesn't have routing features. Okay, thanks, Theo. And while you're talking about knockout, Renee also was wondering when well, you did the update um, in your demo. But is our inserts and deletions uh, hard to do? No, no, no. It's it's it's, uh, it's actually it's almost the same code. Uh, um, and and uh, I could show it to you now, but 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 I think we're we're running rather late. Uh, but but again, it's all in the code, and you can have a look at it. And and it's it's definitely. I mean, I think even. Uh, yeah, 
inserts was was just just one or two lines. Uh, same for deletions. Yeah. So so it's it, it's definitely easy to do. Yeah. Once you I mean once you figure out how the whole concept works, it, it, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you and say you can just uh, open it up and and knock out no pun intended knock out some code and, and it all works. Yeah. So so you have to invest some time in in learning how the whole thing works. But I mean, if you use my database, at least you have you don't have to start from scratch. And and um, and, and I'm not going to say that my code is, is perfect. Way from uh, because, like I said, my JavaScript knowledge is 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 actually too limited. Uh, but I still manage to 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 get some stuff done. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so so definitely have have a, have a look at it. The code is 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 not hard at all. A uh, couple more questions. Uh, any comments on the foundation framework? Uh, I haven't used it. I haven't looked at it at all. I'm sorry. Let's so. then let's go to the next question. Uh, do you have a favorite library for creating graphs? Um, well, I must say uh, there there are there are quite a few and, and and some of them are really cool. But have a look at uh, go to bootstrap.com uh, or, or it, it get it's get bootstrap.com. Uh, go there, have a look at uh, one of the templates uh, which they created for. It's, it's still like I said, it's still in an alpha phase. But definitely have a look at one of the templates which uh, they use there. And that template is based on the on the standard Bootstrap four, but it is enhanced. And one of the enhancements there is a very, very nice uh, graphic database yeah, for graphics. Uh, so I don't know by heart which one, which one it is, but but check it out and and it, it's worthwhile. Yeah. There's a link in there and which links to that to that graphic um, uh, library and and it is really cool. But th there are there are plenty of them. Yeah. Kendo UI, for instance, and also a very very nice uh, graphic uh, or, or graphs interface graphics. Yeah. Uh, Theo, here's the age-old question from Maximilian. What about Internet Explorer compatibility? <laughs> well, it, it, uh, all of, well, it, it, it's not as bad as it sounds. I mean, Bootstrap 3, uh, uh, I think the, the lowest you can go is IE7. In Bootstrap 4, they abandon uh, 8, so you have to have 9 or up. Uh, um, for for backbone and knockout, it's it, it's not a big deal because the, the, they're they're mostly backend frameworks. They work. Yeah? Um, Ratchet is also pretty good backwards compatible. But again, Ratchet is really made for smartphones. So and smartphones you have HTML5 anyway, whether it's uh, your Android browser, browser your, your Chrome on, on Android, or whether it's Safari. Yeah? So you have HTML5 support anyway. Uh, so it's so IE. Again, it's it's only Bootstrap. If you use Bootstrap, uh, then then just look at at the specs. Um, bootstrap three, I, I think, is your best bet there for being backwards compatible up to I think yeah six even. Yeah. Okay, well I think we have time for uh, one more question. Um, what uh, have you? I don't know if you have any comments, Theo, on Dojo. Uh, you know, obviously, I know you're not into X pages, but that's the the Back, yeah. back uh, the framework that's included. Uh, do you ever use Dojo? Well, I must say the, the first thing I did when when IBM announced that they were going to include Dojo uh, with uh, with Domino, the first thing I did was uh, I bought a, a couple of Dojo books. Uh, and uh, e even when I was was in Orlando, uh, so I bought them there. I read about it uh, nine hours in a row flying back home, uh, and uh, I was very impressed with it. Yeah. I just think that, that that it is a really, really big um, framework as well. Very powerful, definitely. I mean, and also the way it's integrated uh, into X Pages, definitely a way to go if, if you if you use X Pages and and you really want to go for for Dojo. Nothing wrong there. On the contrary, it's a very powerful framework, uh, especially because it has a, has a huge uh, amount of uh, design elements you can you can use and reuse. Yeah. So, so no, no, absolutely, go for it. it it's it's very cool. I'm I'm not. Re I'm, I must say I didn't really follow what Dojo did in in the last years, so I'm not sure whether it it's still 
up to snuff where it's still uh, alive and kicking. Uh, but I guess so. There's a lot of people using it, so so I'm pretty sure it does. Um, it, it, it's definitely a viable alternative. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Theo. And, and as a final comment, uh, one of the attendees said, "Really nice presentation and presenter. Uh, thanks a lot." So I'd like to also thank you, as well as my co-host Courtney and Paul. And uh, I appreciate your time, Theo, in joining us today. And I appreciate all everyone uh, attending uh, as well. I know this is the kind of the last full week before the holidays. So I uh, hope everyone has a great holiday season and a great rest of your day.